How's it going everybody? I'm Steve and welcome back. So uh, this is the month of November and a lot of people know in the US we celebrate Thanksgiving near the end of this month. And Megan Mike the Movie Man is actually doing a challenge this month. It's, it's called the Thankful Challenge. Basically where you take uh, each letter of the word thankful and you, you pick a film that kind of represents that, that letter and you kind of explain why that, that film is, a, you know, why it means something to you basically, why you're thankful for that film. So and, and as far as this, you're going to see the posters on my left like I usually do, and they're going to be numbered one through eight. I've got some, I think, eight, eight really good films here that I, I picked off my shelf that I thought I'm really thankful for that film, and then I'll kind of explain why. All right, for the letter T, uh, this is from 2022. I've only had like two films from the 21st century on this list. <laughs> but this one is actually a, a film that was a, a sequel that took like 36 years to, to produce. But the movie is Top Gun Maverick. This is uh, you know, directed by Joseph uh, Kaczynski. You know, starring uh, Tom Cruise, Miles Teller, uh, Jennifer Colley. Uh, the reason why I'm thankful for this film is because it basically saved you know, cinema in 2022. <laughs> if a lot of people know, you know, a lot of people were staying home at the time, and a lot of people are still, you know, staying home now. They've, they've gotten used to just, you know, streaming, unfortunately. But this movie uh, did so well that year that uh, you know, a lot of people knew, like, uh, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home happened, uh, like, the end of 2021 and kind of carried over in, into the end of 2022. But this one was like it released in May of 2022, and I couldn't believe just uh, the all age group groups went out to see this movie. I I went to you know like the movie theater like three weeks after this was released. I had already seen it once, but I, it was like the second time, and it was a packed theater on a Thursday night, and I and it's like, uh, unbelievable that that many people got out of their homes and, and went to see this movie. So I, especially for a movie that's a, a sequel after 36 years to to be that relevant. Okay, so for the letter H, this one was uh, released in 1978. It's from director John Carpenter, and the movie is Halloween. Uh, obviously, this one spawned uh, 12 other films in this franchise. John Carpenter only directed the first one in this franchise. But he, he did like a, a lot of the writing and the, like, some of the music for some of the other films. But obviously, this one you know influenced a lot of the slasher films that happened in the 80s. You know, th th there were other slasher films before this, but this one's definitely influenced probably the most influence of the 80s films because. Obviously, Michael Myers went on to that decade as well. Really, a lot of films were made in, in the 80s with, with that character. So I, I had to thank John Carpenter for making this, uh, this iconic film. It's one that always makes my top, you know, top 10 for favorite horror movies. So uh, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis became a big star in this movie, Donald Pleasant. You know, Jamie Lee Curtis wouldn't have a, a career probably without this movie, even though her, her mother and father were, were famous already too. But um, this is a, you know, she went on to win an Oscar, uh, you know, several years later after this, so. Okay, so for letter A, this one uh, was released in 1973. It's from uh, director George Lucas, and the movie is American Graffiti. Obviously, this, uh, this one was, uh, you know, the major stars in the movie were Richard Dreyfuss and Ron Howard. Obviously, Harrison Ford has a, a small part in this movie, and he went on to uh, basically star in the next film that, uh, the, the, you know, without this movie, there probably wouldn't be a Star Wars. You know, George Lucas uh, did something different in this movie. But if this one hadn't done well, there wouldn't be a Star Wars, you know, four years later. And obviously Harrison Ford started in that and he became this iconic actor, you know, that uh, Indiana Jones and Han Solo and all those great films. So, okay, so for letter N, this one is uh, released in 1968 and the movie is Night of the Living Dead. Obviously this movie gave George Romero a career, uh, you know, starring uh, Dwayne Jones and uh, Judith O'Day. Very uh, progressive kind of film. Uh, this one basically, no one had ever heard of uh, zombies at the time. You know, this is basically put that uh, subgenre horror on the map. It's like one of the one of the first uh, you know modern horror films. And obviously, without this film, it, it wouldn't have they wouldn't have made my one of my favorite horror movies, which is uh, Dawn of the Dead in 1978. Without this, you know, ten years later, you wouldn't see that classic film. So okay, that's that's why I'm definitely uh, thankful for George Romero for making this film. All right, so for the letter K, this one's definitely the oldest one on my list here. From 1933, I have King Kong. This one's an iconic film. It, it, I've read that this basically, this was not the first monster film, but it definitely put monsters on the map. It made monster films really popular. It was also like one of the first uh, stop motion animation films. So that, that makes it iconic in that way. Uh, obviously, it, uh, it also gave uh, Faye Ray a career and Robert Armstrong. And it's uh, one of the directors uh, Mary, is Marion Cooper. They, they had like another director. I think he may have been charged to, in charge of like the of the you know the, the stop motion animation, but the the main director is Marion Cooper. So obviously you know you, you wouldn't have the classic you, you wouldn't have Godzilla later on, uh, all the other great uh, big monster films. Uh, they haven't made nearly as many uh, you know, King Kong films as, as they have you know, Godzilla, but 
This one's like one of the first monsters and it's uh, iconic for that reason. Okay, so for the letter F, this one was uh, released in 1982 and the movie is Fast Times at Richmond High. Obviously this one's uh, way ahead of its time. It had a female director named Amy Heckerling. Uh, she obviously directed like Clueless and European Vacation. And it was uh, really uncommon to have a female director at, at the time. And obviously it's a, uh, you know, written by Cameron Crowe, <laughs> iconic, you know, Rolling Stone magazine writer, made some other uh, great films after this, like, you know, Jerry Maguire and, you know, Say Anything, some of those uh, classic films like that. But, uh, but this one also had a lot of uh, future stars in the movie too. It had uh, Sean Penn, Forrest Whitaker, had uh, Nicholas Coppola, who uh, became Nicholas Cage uh, shortly after this, had uh, Phoebe Cates, obviously. Everybody knows Phoebe Cakes, what, what happened there, the swimming pool scene in this movie. And obviously uh, Jennifer Jason Lee as well. So a lot, a lot of future stars, I'm not even naming all the future stars in this movie, but this movie's iconic in that way. It, it was one of the big influences on the, uh, kind of the, 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 the teen films that happened in, in the 80s. Happened, this is one of the earlier ones from that. So it, without, that, without this film, you wouldn't have those films. Okay, so for the letter U from 1987, I have Untouchables. This is uh, you know, directed by uh, Brian De Palma, obviously one of my favorite directors. Kevin Costner's in this movie, uh, Robert De Niro. I'm probably the most thankful for this film because uh, you know, Sean Connery's in this movie and I'm a huge uh, James Bond fan. And he finally got his due. You know, for, for years he was just known for being James Bond, but he actually won an Oscar for this film. He plays a great role in this movie. Love his character in this movie. He's my favorite character in the movie for sure. And uh, it's so great that Hollywood just finally recognized uh, you know, James Bond, you know, the, 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 this iconic uh, actor uh, playing you know, from Sean Connery uh, doing something other than James Bond, but uh, no, noticing that James Bond was such an icon too and, and uh, to recognize Sean Connery in this way was, was re really classy. All right, so for the letter L, I can tell you this one means uh, probably the most to me out of this list, I think, because it was so, so important at the time. In 2001, uh, this, the, the film is uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Fellowship of the Ring. And I could tell you, if you knew what happened you know, like three months before this movie was released in uh, December of 2001, I could tell you how important this was to, to, to get people to go out to the theaters and, you know, and support this uh, like three hour film. It was so different that Lord of the Rings was uh, such a popular book, but it, it really brought, brought it into the mainstream and it, it made it really popular. And it's got so many, so many stars in this movie. Obviously it's a, you know, directed by Peter Jackson but it has a, you know, some, I, I can't even list all the, all the stars in this movie. It has a Elijah Wood, uh, Ian McClellan, McKellen, uh, Viggo Mortensen, Sean Astin, Rudy, if you know Rudy, uh, Liv Tyler, has a Orlando Bloom, uh, Andy Serkis, you know, plays a Gollum, uh, Kate Blanchett, Christopher Lee, obviously. <laughs> Christopher Lee, an icon, that lived to, he lived to be in his 90s somewhere, and it's unbelievable he was in this movie. It, it, it definitely made this uh, movie really res respectable, but... Love this cast, and like I said, there, there are several other actors I'm not even including in this list, but to, but uh, to me, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring is uh, extremely important in that way because it, it may have uh, saved cinema at that time too. So, you know, it, without this movie, uh, you know, who knows, movie theaters may have died sometime in the 2000s. So, all right, everybody, I really appreciate watching this video. I gotta say, I'm really thankful for my, my, my subscribers. I can't believe this, I, I'm close to 800 subs now. Never thought that would ever happen at, at uh, over three and a half years to doing YouTube. I just can't believe that, that you know, people have supported me for that long and I'm, hopefully I get more subs and just keep, keep growing. Um, you know, keep releasing videos every week and try to, try to make uh, quality vid videos if I can and, and edit them uh, just right so people might actually really like them. But uh, please, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that. And uh, please put a thumbs up on this video. And everybody have a great one. Thank you.